Hi everyone, it's me, your professor, uh, Jason Nelson. Um, we're flooded in, which means that uh, we've had a lot of rain over the past three or four days here in Australia. And uh, we've had so much rain that the roads are now flooded. So I can't get to the normal location that I normally do lectures from, which means our internet connection is not great. Um, so, for example, this road here that you can see, this is our internet, sorry, this is where, this is the road that leads to our place. Uh, and it's completely flooded over. That's literally what it looks like. Um, so because of that, we're not going anywhere. So I'm sending you this video instead. Um, as you know, tomorrow there is a midterm exam it's the start of the midterm exam it starts at 8 a.m on tuesday and goes until saturday morning 8 a.m um, so you have that many days to take the exam and i will be sending you a link to that just in case uh you don't know where it is so you can make sure that you have it all right so uh what we're going to be discussing today over the next probably about just 30 minutes or so is the games element of this course. Now, we're starting off um, discussing more generally what is this idea of games analysis? What is this notion of game studies about anyway? So um, there's quite a few articles that I'd like you to look at over the next basically three weeks. I know you have a break, but you know, you can do some reading over the break, can't you? So um, I have some articles I put up here in the file section of uh, the course, and um, there are quite a few of them. If you want to see where they are, they're in uh, 0.5 game bits. That's what I've called it. And in that section, there are a bunch of different articles. Probably the one that's going to be most important is going to be this. So Vera Fernandez's introduction, um, introduction chapter in a games analysis book. And that is probably going to be the one that is most useful, I think, for um, the course. And it's one that I'm hoping that you can read over the next three or four days. Um, but it basically gives a really good introduction into what is games analysis. Um, you know, I've been trying to drive this home, this point home to you over the last few weeks that there's a big difference between describing something and analyzing something. And there are people that have been exploring this idea in lots of different ways um, in terms of what that is. Like, what is, what is games analysis? How do you actually analyze a game? Um, and, and what are all the elements in a game that you should even think about? Um, so we're going to be discussing that over the next weeks. Certainly we're going to be discussing it a lot when we get back, but I just want to make sure you have a good sense of how it is to, what it means to analyze games. Uh, and then we can start on that, uh, in earnest when we get back. All right. So let's begin by looking at a little bit of that first chapter in Vara Fernandez's book. So I, I've kind of cut and pasted a few sections uh, which are here. And it's nice because, you know, there are different ways of analyzing games, but this book in particular really gives a nice analysis designed for students. You know, it really is kind of geared, uh, that first chapter is really geared towards, um, you know, people like yourself who are understanding games analysis or writing for the first time. Uh, and indeed, if we come here, I've opened the chapter for you. Nope, it, here it is, yep. Um, and let's go to the way to the top. There we go. So this is it. And you'll notice that comes similar to uh, an image we used before. And this is basically the book, Introduction to Game Analysis. Uh, we're, we've been able to give you the first chapter of that, which is really what you need most of all. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the important elements of that chapter. So buried in that chapter, again, I want you to read the whole thing, but buried in that chapter 
is uh, a discussion of three elements that you can use to analyze uh, a video game. Three different ways that you possibly can look at and, and, and try to understand a video game. Now, one of the ways this is relevant is your final exam in this course is going to be a series of essays that you're writing. And those essays will absolutely 100% involve analysis. You will have to analyze a game. You'll have to do some type of analysis of games. I can't tell you what that is specifically because that's what part of the exam is for the final exam, not the midterm, but the final exam. Uh, but I can guarantee you, you'll have to do some analysis. So uh, this stuff is critical for that. So in this book, um, Fernandez talks uh, about uh, basically there are three areas or three sort of building blocks uh, that you can look at and try to understand a game. Now, normally when we think about games, we think about the visuals, right? We think about uh, the gameplay, uh, we, we think about the graphics, you know, we, we think about um, the little chips and tricks that we use to actually win the game. Um, and that is part of it. You know, part of what we're going to be looking at is going to involve gameplay. It is going to involve uh, the visuals, the graphics, the sort of elements we can see and hear. Um, but obviously it's more than that. So Fernandez starts off with three different building blocks um, uh, calls them plastic building blocks, which means they're not they're not hard and firm. You know, they're they're not they're not uh, uh, definitive. Instead, they're plastic and they move and they change. Uh, they're also interrelated. There's no clear boundaries between them. So when you're using these kind of things for analysis, they can differ quite significantly. Um, so the first one is the context of the game. So, you know, there are lots of different ways you can think about the context of a game, but a lot of it comes into how it was produced and played, as well as other elements related to it. So, you know, easy ways of thinking that would be, let's say, thinking about the Lego games. There are lots of Lego games out there. I've played quite a few of them. And a lot of these Lego games are exploring you know, what, what would be normal sort of video game mechanics, normal sort of video game worlds, but instead it, it's done in this kind of Lego fashion with Lego humor. And so there's a context there, right? Some of the things with Star Wars games, any of the games based on properties. Um, and sometimes you have social and cultural context. So one of the most famous examples of context, um, I think, would be Grand Theft Auto. Um, so let's just talk about Grand Theft Auto and its context. So for example, I'm here at the Grand Theft Auto page for Grand Theft Auto 5, right? Now it's giving you verify your age. <laughs> I find that really interesting because why would it do that? You know, why, why would you have to verify your age for a game? Um, stay, stay, drop. Sorry, my dog is trying to get on the bed and he's too old and he's not supposed to. All right, let's do that for my age. Come on. Fine, March. There we go. All right. Um, anyway, so Grand Theft Auto, if you've never played it, is, is a game that can be controversial. It's a game that involves violence. It's a game that involves, um, you know... Uh, all sorts of illicit activity that you go around and you can explore. Um, and it is quite, uh, you know, it's supposed to be controversial. And it, it, it's, it's fascinating uh, thinking about the context of that. And, you know, if you think about just Grand Theft Auto in and of itself, um, and let's say we go to, where is it? Here we go. If we go to Google Scholar, for example, Google Scholar has, what, 20,000 articles on Grand Theft Auto in and of itself. Um, looking at a range of analyzing and understanding a range of, of different contexts, a range of different analyses of this game, of its, of its power and culture, of its meaning, 
um, of its relationship with everything from race to gender to violence to culture to gameplay um, to game studies. And in fact, this is one of the things that I want you to do or I want you to think about doing eventually, uh, maybe not when you're doing the final exam, but one of the things I'd like you to eventually do is, is think about your favorite game and then put it in quotes in Google Scholar and, and read a few articles about your favorite game. See what people are actually talking about in relation, see what scholars are talking about in relation to your um, to your favorite game. And, and I guarantee you, you know, there will be articles about your favorite games in here. Uh, so for example, let's go to, I know a lot of people talk about League of Legends. Now you'll notice when I'm doing a search for it, there's 10,000. My goodness. Wow, 10,000. Um, you'll notice, for example, when I type it in, I put it in quotes. That helps. Uh, it basically allows you to um, specify a uh, very specific title of, of, uh, of a game or, or what have you. Um, all right. So we're going to be looking at the context, for example, of the game, which, you know, uh, you could easily imagine a sports game has a certain context. I mean, all games have a context. Second thing would be uh, a game's overview. Now, this is a bit harder to describe, but in essence, you know, it says here, this is there that focus on the content and the features that it's, it's like the texts inside of a game. And so when we say texts, we mean everything about the game, really. So we're, we're talking about all the elements that are inside of the game. Now, it doesn't mean you have to discuss all of those. You know, an analysis might only discuss one particular component of that. Um, and this article goes on to describe that in a lot of different ways. But it's basically saying, you know, text in a game sense would be everything from you playing the game, the player, the player's performance in the game to um, understanding the world of the game, to possibly thinking about uh, the language in the game, the verb, the verbology, you know, the, the what they're saying, whether it's written or spoken in the game. It could be uh, a particular narrative of a game. I mean, this thing can go on and on and on in terms of the kind of elements that you can discuss in the game. Um, and, you know, so for example, when we're talking about, you know, it says here, for example, the design of a game usually encourages certain type of interactions, which is one of the aspects you can explore. So you can look at the, just the interactive or interactive elements of a game. So it says here, games provide affordances, which basically could define what you do. Um, and you can analyze that. You can actually understand, all right, well, here's this interactive stuff that it's doing, why? You know, what does this mean? How does this relate to culture? How does this relate to the meaning of the game? How does it relate to your analysis of the game? Um, so for example, in Super Mario Brothers, you know, you can jump, you can run, you can pick up objects, you, you, you avoid or you uh, attack enemies. Um, you can grow larger and smaller. You know, there's a range of things that affect your gameplay. And so you can try to understand those things because they actually do have real meaning. I mean, if you're making a game, you're having to make choices on what happens when someone does something and why. And so those are all part of what we'd want to discuss. Um, and then of course we have the formal aspects. Um, these, are, these are harder to understand, I think, and it's something we'd have to ex discuss a lot more in the class. Um, partially just because these sort of formal aspects are related more to sort of formal analysis, um, structural analysis, post-structural analysis. These are all ways of trying to understand a text, usually borrowed from literature or film studies and applied to games, game design, um, and these kind of elements. Um, now, I realize me just talking about this now, it's going to be difficult to get through to you at this point because you haven't read the chapter. And so 
I'm just trying to introduce it in the sense that, you know, understanding games is quite, I think, different than understanding a digital artwork or understanding even the work of electronic literature. Uh, because in many ways, games is a combination of those two and more. You know, it, 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 the complexity is much more difficult, I think, with games and understanding how to analyze them. Uh, but also it's more fun. You know, I think most of you appreciate games like games. And so us discussing them, I think, will be more engaging. Um, so one of the things you're going to be doing is reading that uh, book chapter. Uh, another thing I'm going to be sending you is a uh, link to the Game Studies Journal, which is here. Now, this is a journal that um, is, I mean, it's well known and it's amazing the kind of level on which they're exploring different aspects of games. And so another way you can think about understanding games analysis is simply by reading some of these articles. Um, and, and we're going to be hopefully doing that uh, throughout the next weeks. So, you know, I'm not going to pick any at this very moment, uh, but Friday, for example, we will. And we'll look at a couple of them in depth. Um, and, you know, so look through this journal. Try to find some just pick an article, um, read through it, and, and try to understand how it is that they're looking at it. Even even looking at these short summaries can help you start to understand how people analyze and try to try to sort of write about games. You know, so for example, um, this is an ethnographic study exploring a participant's perspective on local player identity um, in Counter Strike. You know, um, this is an article analyzing the single player digital role playing game as performance and pretend play through character creation, character interaction, game mechanics. Right. And so you'll notice they're picking something like they're deciding, OK, I'm going to see if I can understand this video game through a specific lens, through a, a specific focus. And, uh, you know, this is what you will be doing as well. Um, which is to say, you know, okay, so how can I pick a lens? How can I pick a way to understand a game or an aspect of a game and try to come up with some sort of meaning from it? Um, and, you know, so even, for example, this one that we looked at just for a second, uh, this is talking about character creation and character interaction, you know, game mechanics, focusing on those things. Maybe not the visuals, Maybe not the sound, maybe not even the narrative, but looking at specifically character elements. And, and that is something that you might do uh, when, when you look at some of these different sort of games that we'll be discussing. Um, so uh, the Game Studies, Art, Game Studies Journal goes back a ways. Uh, gosh, I didn't realize it was 20 years old. Wow, that's very cool. So yeah, the Game Studies Journal goes back about 20 years, um, consistently publishing it. So it's quite, you know, it's, while it's a, a relatively new field um, compared to other forms of literary studies, uh, it's still, you know, it still has been around for about 20 years, which is pretty fascinating. So, you know, probably going to be easier for you in terms of games that you would recognize uh, to stick with the last four or five years um, in terms of looking at the articles, but it's up to you, you know. But definitely, this is one of the journals that I want you to look through. Um, additionally, this is kind of a really interesting list that I'm going to send you. This is, at, this is called Game Studies 101, which is actually something that's not being updated anymore. And... Uh, their game studies are looking at more than just video games. So you'll see some of these are board games, some of them are card games. Um, but I, I do think it's worth it to, to look at some of these bits. So for example, this first one 
is a game called Class Struggle, and it's a board game. Um, so, you know, vaguely reminiscent, I guess, of Monopoly, um, but with its own, obviously, focus, uh, looking at class and society and the struggle within it. But it is a board game. And it's not a, a video game, but I, these things are still related. But there are some video games in here. Um, and just generally, I, I think this is a good link to look through. Um, but I'm going to send you this game's archive link as well, specifically, because I think it's worth it to sort of analyze some of those. All right, so let's go back here. Um, also in here is a link called Games Readings. So let's look at that. Oh, I just closed it by accident. There we go. All right. Uh, and this is just talking about some of the readings that you'll need to do for the game sections. So I would suggest you get a head start on that. The first one is that uh, article that we talked about earlier. But there are some other bits that will be important, I think, to look through um, and also watch. So we have included here a, a movie for you to watch, um, which is Video Games the Movie. And, and I think it's worth it to watch just to get starting to get a sense of games. So that's something you can do over the next few weeks during the break. Um, you'll notice the second one is talking about that, that, that video game we've already talked about a little bit last week, which is an art game called That Dragon Cancer, um, which I would suggest that you watch. And I mean, play the game if you can, but um, if not, just at least watch it. And then there are a couple other movies that if you can get a hold of, I would suggest that you watch. Um, there is Ready Player One, which is actually not a great movie, but it's interesting in how it represents games. Um, and similarly, Wreck-It Ralph is not a great movie a as a film, but it is interesting how it represents video games. Um, so those are two other things I'd like you to do, which is... Well, three things there. Watch three movies. Um, so surely you can do that. If you've already seen Red Ready Player One, watch it again. Um, similar thing with Wreck-It Ralph, etc. I mean, you know, Ready Player One is interesting in the sense that uh, it's, it's taking this notion of games and pushing it to a... You know, taking the notion of virtual reality games and pushing it to this kind of extreme moment. Um, almost like a Matrix style moment, I guess you could say, but it's admittedly, self-admittedly a game. Um, as opposed to Matrix, which is like, well, this is just reality, but coded. Um, it's still, you're still stuck in a game environment, which is interesting. And Wreck-It Ralph is just exploring games in a wider, like sort of cultural context, I guess. Uh, this understanding of these, games and how they change and how people stop playing them. Um, I, I think it's a little bit fascinating because I grew up with some of these games. Um, so it's fascinating to see them not being around anymore, you know? And how would a game feel about that? Old arcade games, that kind of thing. It's quite interesting. Uh, the last thing is some people talk about later. Um, cool. All right. Anyway. Um, Oh, and there is an article or a, a book here that it's the entire book, um, Cybertech's Perspectives on Ergodic Literature. And there's a couple sections of that that I'd like you to look through, um, which are listed on the readings. So that's chapter three, which is what we'll start with. Um, and it, it's just interesting there because, you know, it gives you another context by which you can understand analyzing games as a text or analyzing the context of the games, analyzing some specific aspects of the games. So in summary, um, your homework 
after you take the exam is to read this, which is up on the server, which is that first chapter of the uh, Fernandez book, which is great and will give you a very good context of how to discuss games. Um, and then you're going to go to the Game Studies Journal. And I just want you to pick a few of these here. Um, by a few, I mean a few articles in there or more. And, uh, you know, see if you can see what you get for them. Um, but mostly look at them with this eye of trying to understand um, games as a... Um, as a as a as an entity as a thing as an as a text that can be understood and analyzed um cool all right so we'll start with that and then otherwise i will see you all on friday again i apologize for being flooded in and i apologize if you hear my dog making a whining noise i don't think he likes it when i talk um Cool. All right, everyone. So I will see you on Friday. And uh, yeah, look for the email, obviously. Accompanying this video will be an email with some various things in it. So um, I'll probably summarize some of this in there as well. And I'll see you on Friday. Cool. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.